Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna start getting ready for your AP calculus test. Uh, I guess, uh, I think it's in May. And uh, just getting ready with some FRQs. Uh, there's basically six type of FRQs. One of them I call just table questions. And anytime I see a table question, guys, um, I'm thinking, okay, they're gonna ask me something about rate of change, or they're gonna ask me for a Riemann sum, something like that. So let's go ahead and do some of these, and I'm gonna try to do this uh, short and quick. Um, and then uh, just to have you guys kind of get an idea of how to do, do these. This is from 2023. It says a customer at a gas station is pumping gasoline into a gas tank. The rate of flow of gasoline is modeled by a differential equation F, where F of T is measured in gallons per second. Okay, so that's important. T is measured in seconds since the pumping began. Selected values of F of T are given in the table. Okay, so remember, whenever you see a table, start thinking, okay, Riemann sum, something, uh, rate of change, okay? And this is the first question in, in 2023, so I'm thinking it's not going to be too difficult. It says, using the correct units, interpret the meaning, okay, of this integral in the context of the problem. So let's go ahead and do that first. So remember, guys, when... When you when they give you an integral, that's a uh, rate accumulation. Okay, so this is in gallons per second. Okay, that's a rate of change. So what happens when you integrate a rate? You get an amount. Okay, that's what you get. So here, when you integrate a rate, you're gonna get the total amount of gal of gasoline that's in the tank. Okay, so what you can write is the integral uh, from 60 to 135 of ft of, of t dt uh, means represents and i'm going to write it fast guys and messy represents the total amount of gallons of gasoline and you can use your your question here um, that are being pumped into the gas tank gallons of gasoline um, pumped into the gas tank okay between t equals 60 and t equals 135. Okay, so that's what it means. It represents the total number of gallons, okay, of gasoline pumped into the gas, into the gas tank between t equals 60 and t equals 135. And so you need to make sure you represent that in order to get your point. So that's for that part. Now, the second part, it says use a right Riemann sum. Okay, so that's very, very common. You're gonna see right Riemann sum, you're gonna see left Riemann sum, you're gonna see trapezoidal. Um, you sometimes, let's see the midpoint. I, I don't see that too often, um, but you should know it. Okay, and it says three sub intervals. So what I tell my students is make a little diagram for yourself. So from 60 to 135. So here, there's your first rectangle, there's your second, there's your third. And because they want a right, let's do this. Right corner. Okay. And a lot of times they ask you to interpret um, if it's overestimated or underestimated. But in this case, they don't. All right. So how do you find the area of a rectangle? Well, just base times height. Well, what's the base? Well, the base is the distance here. All right. Your X value. So what's the distance from 60 to 90? 30. So we can say the integral from 60 to 135 of f of t dt equals 30 times the perpendicular height, which is 0.15 plus, and now we go to the next rectangle, 90 to 20, what's that distance? That's another, another 30 times 0 0.1 plus, then the last one, 120 to 135, that is uh, 15 times 0 
And if you put that in your calculator, you should get 8.25. Okay. Um, and that's it. Those are your three points. So you get a point for representing this part here, a point for the correct answer, and the point for the interpretation. You don't have to put the units here because you already interpreted the, uh, the integral. But it's always good to put, okay, so 8.25 what? 8.25 gallons, okay? Because remember, you, you integrated the rate, so you got an amount, okay? For letter B, it says, must there exist a value of C between 60 and 120 such that F prime of C equals zero? Now, oftentimes, when I see a table question, I think, okay, they're gonna ask me for a rate of change. Uh, in this case, in part A, they didn't, but in part C, they asked me for the mean value theorem. Make sure you know the mean value theorem, okay? Make sure you know that. All right, so uh, how do you find F prime of C? Well, they give you your parameters right here. So basically, what they want us to do is use our rate of change formula and use those values right there, okay? So you remember um, how to do that. But the first thing, in order to use the mean value theorem, you have to do something. You have to state F is differentiable, okay? You got to state that. That implies F is continuous. Because remember, we can't do anything unless it's continuous and differentiable, okay? This continues on the interval between 60 and 120. So now having said that, now we can move forward and use the, uh, apply the mean value theorem. So you have to make sure you say it's differentiable and continuous. Let's say you have a question, you don't know if you should put that, just put that, just restate it. It tells you right there, differentiable function. If it's differentiable, it's continuous, period. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and apply our, our basically um, our rate of change. So, it's your slope formula, so you're basically f of 120, you're using these values here, minus f of 60, all over 120 minus 60, okay? And that's going to give you 0 0.1 minus 0 0.1 over, what is that, 60? Either way, you get 0, okay? So, must there exist a value such that f prime of c equals 0? The answer is yes. Yes. Okay. And then yes, by the mean value theorem. And then you just rewrite this. There exists a value of C. Okay. Or you can say there must exist a value uh, of C. For the it for this interval, uh, we'll write it over here. Okay, such that f prime of c is equal to zero. Okay, and you see what did I do? I just use this same verbiage. Okay, once you get this, you say yes by the mean value theorem, and you just go ahead. There exists a value of c. Blah 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 blah. Such that boom, and you're done. Okay, and I think that question's worth two points. And that's it, guys. That's it. Okay. So make sure you know the mean value thing. All right, let's go ahead and keep going. And part C, it tells you the rate of flow of gasoline. Okay, that's important, right? Rate of change again. In gallons per second, there you go, there's your rate of change, can also be modeled by this function. Okay, G of T between 0 and 150. Using this model, find the average rate of flow. They ask this a lot. They ask this a lot, okay? Over the time interval between 0 and 150. Show the setup. So this is your average value. So it's one over B minus A, the integral from A to B of, you can say, let's just F of T dt. In this case, it's gonna be G of T, but that's what you're basically uh, finding, the average value formula, okay? They ask this a lot, so make sure you're ready for that one, okay? So, 
what we're going to do, we have to set up, um, we're going to write 1 over, um, that's your A and your B, 150 minus 0 is 150, the integral from 0 to 150 of GT dt. You don't have to rewrite this whole thing because they tell us GT equals this, so I'm just going to put GT. Okay, now the other thing though, you have to input it into your calculator. So I've had students ask me to input it into the calculator. Um, and <clears throat> so let me go ahead and show you how to do that. A, a basic TI 84 will work. So uh, let's go ahead and do this. Our fraction alpha y equals, you get 1 over 50, 1 over 150. Move it over. Now you're going to go to math 9. You're going to go from 0 to 150. All right. So now here's a tricky part, right? Look at the way it's written. That gives it away. So these first parentheses here that you see, uh, they have to encompass everything. So I'm going to put another parentheses because that's this parentheses. Do my fraction. Okay. And then I'm going to use X instead of T. X over 500. Whoops. And then close that parentheses. And then I hit a cosine, and then you have another parentheses, okay? And then y equals, and you have x over 120. Close that parentheses, and then you have a square. You see how it's uh, written for you? It's almost like they, they kind of gave it away, which is good, okay? Because if you input it incorrectly, um, it's going to give you a wrong answer. So this is what you should get, 0 0.09599, okay? So that's going to give you 0 0.09599967. Now, uh, remember, you can do three decimal places, one, two, three, and just truncate it there, or you can... You can you can uh, round it so 0 0.95 or if you, you can round it you can truncate it or round it 0 0.0996 okay either one of those would work and i believe that's it for this one um because look at the question it says find the average rate of flow that's this show the setup that's it all right and that's it. They don't ask us to give anything else. So we're done. We're done with this one. Okay. And that's going to give you two more points. So not bad. All right. The last one, part D in this question. It says, using the model G defined in part C, find the value of G prime of 140. Okay. Interpret the meaning of your answer in the context of the problem. Okay, so again, a calculator question. So you're going to go ahead and put in your calculator and you're going to G prime of 140. You should get approximately negative 0 0.004908. <clears throat> now, remember, you got to, you got to, understand what this is oops sorry this is a rate of change R the rate of flow of gasoline in gallons per second so this is a gallons per second okay so what is this if i take the derivative again i'm going to have gallons of sec gallons per second per second okay you can have gallons per second per second so this is gallons per second per second, okay? So this tells you guys the rate at which the gas gasoline is flowing into the tank. Is it increasing or is it decreasing? Okay, so once you plug this into your calculator, you got to interpret it, okay? So um, you're going to write the rate... And that's important because now this is a rate. It's a derivative. The rate at which, and I'm sorry, I know I'm writing fast. Gasoline is flowing, okay, 
into the tank is decreasing. Why is it decreasing? Because it's negative. It is decreasing at a rate of, and you can just um, go ahead and round it, 0 0.005. Or if you want to truncate it, you can write 0 0.004 gallons per second, whoops, per second. Now at t equals 140, you have to make sure you say at that time, okay? At that specific time. All right, guys? So not too difficult. Um, yeah, but this is a straight calculator question. But if you have any questions, guys, uh, I'll go ahead and keep doing more of these. Hopefully, the more you see these, the more you see these table questions. I mean, they ask the same thing over and over and over again. So um, if you haven't already, go check out the other videos. I kind of go through it as well. But once you get the hang of it, believe me, the test is not, is not too bad. All right, guys. I'll see you guys on the next one.